Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. I'm back from my business trip, so it's finally time to get back into making videos, and it's really unfortunate that this is the video I have to start with. For those of you living under a rock, Unity Technologies, the group behind the Unity engine that so many of our favorite games have been built on, including Pillars of Eternity 1 and 2, uh, has made some pretty draconian changes to their pricing and policy structure, and these changes are all already having a massive negative impact on developers throughout the gaming industry. Now, I haven't spoken about this yet on my channel, of course, since I've been gone. So I'm going to take this opportunity to walk through some of the details while also giving my perspective on why I think Unity believes this will work. And then I'll also review some of the thoughts and perspectives on game devs throughout the, um, throughout the industry and provide a little bit of perspective on how those developers are planning to fight back. And then we'll end with the latest statement from Unity on this ongoing situation. For those of you that are already completely up to date and just want to know what Unity Unity has said most recently, their trap is down below so you can skip as you please. Uh, for the rest of you, before we dive into the actual details, I just want to reiterate once again, this is a huge, massive change that will undoubtedly have a negative impact on the gaming industry. It is going to push more developers towards instituting monetization policies that the vast majority of us hate, and it quite possibly could push more developers towards focusing on mobile games. And I think that's really part of what Unity wants. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. This past Tuesday, Unity put out a Twitter message announcing their new blog, Unity Plan Pricing and Packaging Updates. Effective January 1st, 2024. So these changes are not in effect as of yet, and already just the idea of them is having a massive negative impact. Uh, on January 1st, we will introduce a new Unity runtime fee that's based on game installs. As many of you know, the Unity engine is in fact two substantial software components, the Unity editor and the Unity runtime. The Unity runtime is code that executes on player devices and makes made with Unity games work at scale with billions of monthly downloads. We are introducing a Unity runtime fee that is based upon each time a qualifying game is downloaded by an end user. We chose this because each time a game is downloaded, the Unity runtime is also installed. Also, we believe that an initial install-based fee allows creators to keep the ongoing financial gains from player engagement, unlike a revenue share. So they mentioned that last part, unlike a revenue share, because if you use one of their major competitors, the Unreal Engine, then you're going to have to give up 5% of your revenue, which was a big reason why people would choose Unity over um, uh, having the Unreal Engine because it was a much cheaper option up until now. Let's go ahead and look at the thresholds that have to be reached in order for this fee to be applied to a developer. So it's not automatic. There are a couple of things that have to occur. First and foremost, what your threshold is, is determined by which plan you use, right? So you have Unity Personal and Plus. I'm pretty sure Unity Plus is going away. So Unity Personal is the only one that matters here. And then you have Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise. Unity Personal is the free version of Unity. And it's basically used for students, people who just want to learn about Unity, or developers who just don't have any additional income and so they want the uh, free version, right? And then you have Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise, which both require you to give Unity a certain amount of money per month. I think with Unity Enterprise, it's something like four, maybe $5,000 a month you have to give to Unity in order to get the Enterprise version, okay? And then what your threshold is for revenue and installations is determined by that plan. So for those developers who are using the free version, which again is quite a bit of them, their game has to generate $200,000 in revenue over the last 12 months, and it must have been downloaded 200,000 times over its lifetime, right? So this is not about 
How many times was the game installed after January 1st, 2024? No, it's saying that on January 1st, 2024, it's going to look at the entire lifespan of your game, even if it came out back in 1980 and say, hey, how many times was this game installed? However many times, if it equals up to 200,000, then you have crossed this threshold, right? Even though you made the game under a completely different term of service and with a completely different expectation regarding, regarding Unity's pricing model. And then if you look at the revenue threshold, if you've made $200,000 in the last 12 months, which is not a huge sum, right? Like on an individual basis, we look at that and say, oh man, I made $200,000 last month, last year. That, that's crazy. Like that's incredible. Yeah. On an individual basis, it's incredible. When you're talking about game sales, $200,000 is a drop in the bucket, especially if, if you've got a team, so you got multiple people you got to pay, this is, you can absolutely be an indie developer whose game made $200,000 over the course of last year, and you're still indie. Like, you, you still have very, very scarce resources. So this, this threshold is extremely easy for a developer to reach. And it's going to harm a lot, a lot of small developers who are going to end up having these fees placed on them. Now, what do the fees look like? Well, once again, if you have the free version, which is the version that a ton of indie developers are on, you are going to have to pay Unity 20 cents for every installation of your game, right? And then even at the pro and enterprise levels, they have their own package of of uh, money that will be have to be paid to Unity based on how well their game does. Now, this is problematic even if you're just putting out a regular game, like Obsidian putting out Pillars of Eternity, having to pay Unity 20 cents every time somebody installed their game is a big, big deal. But it's especially huge for developers who are making mobile games, right? Because a lot of them make their games free to play. You don't get paid when the customer downloads your game. You get paid if the customer downloads your game and enjoys your game and then decides, okay, since I enjoy this game, I'm going to also purchase your microtransactions or do some other things that's going to make me more powerful while I'm playing the game, right? But none of that income is guaranteed. And it's not, again, it's not tied to the installation. You're taking the chance that your game is good enough to get these people to want to pay up. In this system, you basically have to pay Unity before you make any money. And you have to pay Unity regardless of whether or not you make any money. That is not sustainable in any way, shape, form, or fashion. A developer named Sal Sosowski put a chart up on Twitter that really demonstrates how unsustainable the model is. So how much of your revenue is Unity going to take based upon your yearly downloads and your revenue per download in cents. So again, some developers put out games where they are not paid when the customer downloads the game. And consequently, this system will put them in a situation where Unity is taking 100% of their revenue because they haven't generated any money yet, but they still owe money to Unity. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. And to be honest with you, Anything after the light green portion, and uh, honestly, even the light green portion, is deeply problematic. Anything more than the uh, the dark green area is more than what the Unreal, what you would have to pay up using the Unreal Engine. This is absolutely not sustainable. Which brings up the question: Why does Unity believe this will work? The answer to that is the fee reduction for use of Unity services. Qualifying customers may be eligible for credits towards the Unity runtime fee based on the adoption of Unity services beyond the editor, such as Unity gaming services or Unity level play mediation for mobile ad supported games. This program enables 
deeper partnership with Unity to succeed across the entire game life cycle. Now some of you may be wondering, what is Unity Level Play? And I'm glad you asked. All you've got to do is head over to the Maximize Mobile App Revenue section of the website for us to be able to go through it. Drive more revenue with Level Play suite of powerful optimization tools, which provide the most competitive in-app auction, live data reporting, and hands-on guidance, all delivered by a team of experts dedicated to your success. So essentially, I'm gonna put this draconian fee on you and try to reap more of your revenue unless you go ahead and let, start letting us put ads into your product and use our features, our level play features, in order to be able to do that. Also, if you scroll down just a little bit further, you'll see a drive app revenue section, right? Where you'll notice Iron Source ads. Iron Source is an ad tech company, which basically means that they make tools to help developers implement more ads into their games or their apps. Back in 2022, Iron Source and Unity had a $4 billion merger, and it seems like that merger was a precursor to Unity changing a lot of their business model overall and putting a much greater emphasis on trying to push creators into using Iron Source technology to put more ads into their games and consequently generate more revenue for Unity, or don't put in the ads, but you're gonna have to take this draconian fee that'll allow us to reap more money from you anyway. There's actually even more levels to it than that. The CEO, I guess, or original CEO of Iron Source is now on the board for Unity. He dumped a whole bunch of Unity stocks before this change occurred, as did other members of the board. So there's some, what at least appear to be pretty, pretty credible accusations of insider trading and, and sabotage, but I don't know enough about that kind of stuff to feel comfortable going over all of it in a video, but... But yeah, this is deep, <laughs> it is deep. And it seems like Unity is pretty much self imploding. And to say that it's sad to see is an understatement. Now, obviously Unity knew that this announcement would cause a lot of questions. And so they uh, provided a Q and A to try to get some of the obvious questions out of the way, but the answers leave a lot to be desired. First and foremost, there was a question about who is impacted by this price change. And so they wanted to make it clear that more than 90% of our customers will not be affected by the change. This is extremely misleading because 90% of their customer base doesn't use Unity in order to sell games. A lot of these people are students, folks who are learning about Unity, folks who are trying to figure out, maybe I wanna get into game design, maybe I wanna open up my own studio, but they're not really sure yet, so they download the free version of Unity and play around with it, but they're not actually trying to make full-scale games that are meant to deliver a profit, right? So within that 10% of customers who are going to be impacted, is a large slew of indie developers whose creativity is essentially going to be stifled by this draconian change. So if Unity plans to charge developers based upon installations, an obvious question is, how are you going to collect installs? Well, they answer, we leverage our own proprietary data model. We believe it gives an accurate determination of the number of times the runtime is distributed for a given product. So basically, you gotta trust me, bro. You gotta trust that I'm gonna give you the correct information, even though monetarily it's in my best interest to overinflate these numbers. And there's no way for you to be able to check them or to confirm really that I'm getting the right data or using the right data. What business would accept this? What business would accept this? There's no way, there's no shot, man. So this rolls into another question then. If a user reinstalls or redownloads a game, will that count as multiple installations? And the answer is no. They're not gonna charge a fee for reinstalls, which is fantastic. But then you also have to ask, do installs of the same game by the same user across multiple devices count as different installs? Yes, we treat different devices as different installs. Wow, 
<laughs> so if I download a game, if I get a game on Steam and I download it on my PC and then I download it on Steam Deck, that's I, I'm reading that as it's treated as two different installs, right? That's insane. That's insane. It doesn't make any sense. If a game that's made enough money to be over the threshold has a demo of the same game, do installs of the demo also include a charge? If it's early access beta or demo of the full game, then yes, you're going to charge them if the customer installs a demo? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> And then finally, finally, this is the real kicker as far as I'm concerned. How will we approach fraudulent or abusive behavior that impacts the install count, such as bombing or piracy? Because this is the obvious issue, right? Like, we already have a bunch of, of gamers who do dumb shit because they don't like what a particular developer does or they don't like how a particular character is written, calling in death threats, all sorts of nonsense. It's absolutely feasible that a player or a huge uh, group of players would uninstall and reinstall the game multiple times in order to try to incur fees on a particular developer. That absolutely will happen. So how do you track it in a way that ensures that developers won't be punished unnecessarily? So Unity says, we won't count fraudulent installs or install bombing either. As part of our model, we are creating solutions to address the problem of double counting reinstallations. So what you're telling me is you're announcing this change. You've decided to do this change. You've decided to institute these fees and you, but you haven't figured out yet <laughs> how to ensure players are not going to be able to take advantage of the new policy. Right. You're just going to throw this out there and say, ah, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll somehow we'll make it work. And trust us, trust us, man. When, once we implement it, it'll be surefire. There's no way. Let, come on, man. Come on. Like you're the, the, the thing that's crazy to me about this is unity deals with other businesses, right? This is the type of thing you can do if you're dealing with the general populace. People are dumb. Like, I, I, I love people, all right? I mean, I think people are good at art, but most of these people are dumb. They just are, all right? So you can pull the wool over their eyes and do crazy stuff like this, and people just shrug and adapt and accept it. We've seen that time and time again. You can't do that when you're dealing with businesses, with people that are looking at the X's and O's and the details, like this is not gonna fly. I don't understand why they thought it would fly. You can't treat everybody the same. You can fool some people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all of the time. As a matter of fact, scratch that. It doesn't matter why they felt like they could get away with this because the fact of the matter is they're not going to. The developers have been loud and clear they're not going to stand for this. So let's start walking through some of their responses. First and foremost, we have Brandon Sheffield. He is a developer over at Necrosoft, a gaming company that has used the Unity platform for every game that they have made. And he makes it pretty, pretty obvious how he feels about this. But now I can say unequivocally, if you're starting a new game project, do not use Unity. If you started a project four months ago, it's worth it switching to something else. Unity is quite simply not a company to be trusted. Yikes. Agro Crab is another popular indie developer and they make it clear where they stand. Hey gamers, today Unity, the engine we use to make our games, announced that they'll soon be taking a fee from developers for every copy of the game installed over a certain threshold, regardless of how that copy was obtained. Guess who has a somewhat highly anticipated game coming to Xbox Game Pass in 2024? That's right, it's us and a lot of other developers. That means Another Crab's treasure will be free to install for the 25 million Game Pass subscribers. If a fraction of those users download our game, Unity could take a fee that puts an enormous dent in our income and threatens the sustainability of our business. Pause. <laughs> you want to know something interesting? Unity responded, not directly to them, but just in general, responded and said, hey, games on Game Pass, the developers won't have to pay the cost for those installs. Instead, Unity believes 
that they'll be able to pass on those costs to Microsoft. They think Microsoft is going to pay the installation fees for developers who use Unity to create their games. Wow. The <laughs> I can't even, I don't even, I don't have a follow-up for that. I don't have a follow-up for that. All I can just say is I'm actually grateful that Microsoft's lawyers will be involved in this whole situation because that could pr probably only be good for the developers. You think you're going to bully Microsoft? Anyway, and that's before we even thinking about sales on other platforms or pirated installs of our game or even multiple installs by the same user. This decision puts us and countless other studios in a position where we might not be able to justify using Unity for our future titles. A lot of developers are taking a serious look at moving to another engine. If these changes aren't rolled back, we'll be heavily considering abandoning our wealth of Unity expertise we've accumulated over over the years and starting from scratch in a new engine, which is really something we'd rather not do. On behalf of the dev community, we're calling on Unity to reverse the latest in a string of short-sighted decisions that seem to prioritize shareholders over their product's actual users. I fucking hate it here. Man, you can feel the pain through the statement. Believe it or not, that's actually a tame statement considering what some of these other developers are stating. Dylan Rogers, who is with New Blood Interactive and working on Gloomwood, makes it pretty clear that Gloomwood will be the last game he makes with Unity uh, even if they roll back the changes. Because even if they backtracked it, the severe breach of trust has made any working relationship a risk to continue. He also states that other developers at New Blood Interactive, including his co-developer, David is also planning to uh, follow suit. In the end, at the end of his post, he says, go back to the drawing board if you ever hope to salvage whoever is left in the independent development scene that isn't already too embarrassed to associate with you. Damn. Tom Francis, who's been a developer on multiple games, makes it clear from a business perspective why this change is so horrible and why a lot of developers are going to decide to go ahead and leave. Don't often weigh in on the clusterfuck of the day, but in case it needs saying, Unity rug pulling a new fee structure on devs is an astonishing scumbag move. Not because of how much it shakes out to, but because a partner who can and will change how much of your revenue you owe them after you've made and released your game needs to be avoided like the plague. I hadn't realized they even legally could. I gather Epic's Unreal license is perpetual perversion. So whatever the deal is when you commit, you're guaranteed that forever if you're happy to stick with that version. Their 5% is more than Unity's new fees in most scenarios. But compared to a company that can help themselves to any amount of your money at any time, suddenly sounding more reasonable. And of course, this entire situation has been fantastic for Unity's competitors. Both Unreal Engine and Godot are getting a lot more attention right now. This is a video on Twitter from Passive Star checking out some of Godot's capabilities and seeing if it can, uh, how it renders volumetric fog. This video has 1.6 million views. There are a lot of developers now looking at are there serious alternatives that we can use um, since it appears that Unity is no longer a stable partner. Adelir is taking things a step further, informing people about a plugin for Unity that allows you to easily transfer assets from that engine over into Godot. You, you can absolutely expect to see a lot more of this as more devs figure out how to completely move their games. Now, of course, all developers have not decided that they're gonna move over to a different engine. Some of them have absolutely made the decision to fight back. And you can see Exolavier Nelson Jr. talking about that here. Many of you who enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 and follow Larian Studios will probably recognize his name. He says, I'm hearing at least one significant group of developers is talking a class action lawsuit against Unity. Holy shit.
And then a couple of days later, The Verge put out an article specifically talking about the developers who are attempting to fight back against Unity. So developers fight back against Unity's new pricing model. The game developers affected by Unity's new pricing model are striking back. A collective of developers across 19 companies, mostly based in Europe and mostly developing mobile games, has put out an open letter urging Unity to reverse course on its recently announced pricing model changes. As a course of immediate action, our collective of game development companies is forced to turn off all iron source and Unity ads monetization across our projects until these changes are reconsidered. Wow. Now that is significant. Right, because this is the whole business. This is what Unity is trying to accomplish, getting as many developers as possible to use their monetization structure and use their tools and they, in order to push those ads. So if these companies are able to come together and potentially get other companies also to join in and basically say, we will not use any iron source or unity monetization until this situation is rectified, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. To me, this is more effective than a lawsuit. Because the lawsuit is not really clear whether or not what Unity has done is actually illegal. A lot of people are running around saying it should be illegal. You change terms of service, blah, blah, blah. It's not clear at all if developers win that case in court. But we don't. you don't have to win a case in court to say, oh, okay, I just won't use your ads. <laughs> I just won't use your, your monetization structure. Sure, I'll just go somewhere else. That's a totally different thing. That That is effective. They probably need more companies to do it, but this is what will really, really get Unity's attention. Essentially, these companies, which represent thousands of games with billions of downloads, have blocked Unity from making any more money in their games. Huge. Some of the companies represented in the letter include Voodoo, Azure Games, and Say Games, with each claiming over 100 games. That is a massive hit to Unity. There's no way they're just shrugging their shoulders and ignoring this. This, the, I, I'm, I'm really, really curious if they saw that coming. You would think they did, but the rest of this is so stupid that I feel like there's a real possibility that they thought the developers would e either move to a different engine or would try to sue them. I, it, it seems like maybe they didn't really consider that, hey, we'll just turn off all their ads and we'd rather take that hit then allow you to do this to us. And I think with that, it's a great time to transition into Unity's most recent statement and their apology. If you were um, hoping for uh, a huge robust apology that also promises to roll back the uh, policy that they have instituted, sorry to disappoint. That is definitely not what appears to be happening. This, is, this looks like marketing corporate mumbo jumbo. I'm gonna tell you that straight up. So don't get excited, but you can at least tell from the statement they're hurting. They're hurting. They're hearing some things like they are making some decisions about what they have to do moving forward. It doesn't seem like they're going to be able to just do this without any repercussions, which honestly is very refreshing to hear because the effect of the, the decisions they've made is just absolutely horrendous. So Unity says, we have heard you. We apologize for the confusion and angst the runtime fee policy of announced on Tuesday caused. We are listening, talking to our team members, community, customers, and partners, and we'll be making changes to the policy. We will share an update in a couple of days. Thank you for your honest and critical feedback. Now, it's obvious to me they're hoping this all blows over in the next couple of days and that this is just an initial rush uh, of rage and then it'll die down and people will move on and they'll be able to essentially get away with it. That's not happening. <laughs> That's absolutely not happening. If there's one thing, especially in today's age, if there's one thing gamers love to do, it's get mad. <laughs> they get mad over the slightest things and this is not slight. So this, I don't understand why you're waiting a couple of days. What is supposed to happen in that couple of days, bro? Either you're gonna roll with it or you're not. 
there, you can't, this is not something where you can just make a little change here and a little change there. And all of a sudden people are going to be okay with it. Either you're going to roll back this change or you're going to have to deal with the repercussions of it. I don't think there's any adjustments that are going to make people feel better. And I think Carnage in typical Carnage uh, form hammers the point home. We have heard you. We have not listened to you. Here's a bunch of marketing talk to make you think we're doing something when in actuality, we're just figuring out how to keep doing what we've already decided to do. Thank you for your honest and critical feedback. What? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody's buying this. Nobody's buying this, man. So that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. That's where we stand right now. And let me just reiterate again. It's sad. It's really, really sad. My heart goes out to all the devs that have been impacted that, by this. It's going to stifle creativity. It's going to push more devs towards making soulless games, soulless content, strictly to try to monetize um, their client base because that's the only thing that they can be paid to do because of draconian policies like this. It is absolutely going to have an extremely negative impact on the gaming industry. Uh, I just, I, I don't see how it works out any other way. And it's tough to watch. It's tough to see. But anyway, that's the video. So I hope you all enjoyed it as much as you possibly can. Leave me your feedback down below, your thoughts. Um, I assume this is probably going to be ongoing. So uh, we'll see if it goes from here. But I'll also see you in the next video. Take care.